Also, the OT will work with problem solving. Sometimes if someone has a stroke or some other kind of um, injury that interferes with, with thinking or um, language production, um, the OT might work with, with um, strategies for getting the words out or organizing your calendar or your day. Um, and then um, what under, I think ancillary home care here includes home health aids. And, um, Home health aides, the other thing that our agency does is um, that we are the um, source for the home health aides from elder services and from um, and for the hospices. So you so provide the home health aides for the for the for, for, for the other for the ECOP and the other pro other programs too? Yes, we do. Um, but there's a there's there are two of us on the island and we are a, a major provider for those um, that the, the homemaker services that come out of the elder services, as well as the personal care side of it. So there's a homemaker piece and there's a personal care piece as well. So those are different levels of care that um, elder services can determine when they come out to your home to figure out what you need from them and what level of service you might qualify for. And how many of these 60-day plans can you get in a row? Um, we, uh, we document the need for skilled care and as as long as we feel as though there's a, a need for skilled care and we can demonstrate that and we have goals to meet then we're pretty good so that means forever that means forever. I, I, That's, I, I'm not gonna go on record as right. forever but it's theoretically <laughs> forever now I, I want to do next slide because I want to kind of talk about the, the effect of this on next slide so this is a huge program Right? You just heard what is like a huge program. The limiting factor in this program has been um, that the standard that by which everybody was measured, right, or the success of the VNA was measured, in determining what, whether, whether the 60-day plan was a success and therefore whether you, know, you could keep getting it, was whether you got better. Right? Whether, because the theory was, oh, you're sick. Right? So we're bringing you a nurse in to determine kind of what you're sick with, and we're going to develop this plan right, that's going to show, and you're going to have these measurable standards about how you're going to get better. Right? And that's what is, and if you don't, well then we're going to stop the benefit. Right? It's very similar to, many of you maybe have heard something very similar in nursing home cases, where people have gone to the hospital, been to the nursing home, been on Medicare, and then somebody said, oops, sorry, you're not getting better anymore, you've got to stop, you know, we're, you're off. Right? Next slide. Um, and, and, and by the way, that's why when they file, when, when these 60-day plans are filed by these folks, they file this form called the OASIS form, which has to include with it a so-called form 485, which is the doctor's form that says what your conditions are and, and, what, and how you're supposed to be getting better, and it defines your plan of care, and it has in it measurable and reasonable goals. These are Medicare's words, Medical, me, measurable and reasonable goals for how you're going to get better. Next slide. Then came, uh, and, and, and this is all done, we already, she already talked about that in coordination with the VN, right? I keep waiting for my good slide. Next slide. And, and, and where's Jim up? Oops. And then came, go back to the previous one, um, a case called Jimmo, Jimmo versus Sibelius. A case whose slide we apparently didn't put in because I forgot. <laughs> what Jimmo was, it, it Jimmo, J-I-M-M-O versus Sibelius. If you want to look, read some fascinating stuff on the web right now, look it up. Jimmo versus Sibelius, S-E-B-E-L-I-U-S. Kathy Sibelius, the woman who runs um, this federal health and human services. And what that case did, it came out of Vermont. Uh, it was done by the Centers for Medica Medicare Advocacy, which is a national organization in conjunction with Vermont Legal Care. And it was a case in which they, the, the, those folks said, with Medicare as the, as on the other side of the case, that's not what the Medicare law says. That's what you've been saying it says for many years, but that's not what it says. It says that you are entitled to skilled 
nursing services together with these ancillary home care services, because as long as you get skilled nursing services, you're also entitled to a plan with home care services in it. As long as it can be shown that, that those services are necessary to keep you from getting worse, either to keep you the way you are or to keep you from getting worse at the rate at which you would have gotten worse in the absence of those services. So it's either to keep you on a plateau, just the opposite of what the current standard has been, which has been as soon as you hit the plateau, you're off, right? So the Centers for Medicare, so, so, so CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, which is the entity that runs both Medicare and Medicaid, um, settled this case. It didn't go to trial, right? They settled that case, and in the settlement, they agreed to that standard, that that's what the real standard is. And they said in the case, oh, that's what we've been saying all along. Well, nobody thinks that's true, right? But that's what they said, and they're actually now in the process of, of revising their 100 page Medicaid, Medicare eligibility manual, which I have read, right, so that I could do this presentation. Um, the the 1,000 page, man, to, to change all the places in the Medicare manual that you might have interpreted to mean that you have to be getting better on these, right? As a result of this case, these 60 day plans may be fundamentally changing. And I know Sandy and I just did a presentation uh, before a, 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 state, a, a group of statewide, uh, and a statewide, the, it was the group of a, ASAPs, the groups Mass of which, excuse, excuse, Mass, Mass Home Care, that's right, which is the group which is, it, includes all of these people like um, the elder services of the Cape and Islands to talk about this. Now you had talked about some, how, how this program and that one could really affect folks, the folks that I deal with the most, people with dementia as a result of Alzheimer's or other Diseases. Could you just talk to that a little bit? I think an important piece of, um, of the Juno case to recognize is, is that, um, and as you talked about skilled nursing, which is certainly a big part of home care, um, but the other piece of it is, is if somebody that may have Alzheimer's, somebody that may have Parkinson's, somebody that may have MS, is probably utilizing more on the lines of physical therapy and occupational therapy, and because of those things, are also getting home health aids. So I just want to be clear that um, for those plateaued or those cases where they have a degenerative disease, which is probably going to get worse, that they are now eligible um, to continue in home care, especially in the area of those services of physical therapy and occupational therapy. Think about our Alzheimer's, our Alzheimer's folks who need occupational therapy to just continue to be able to get themselves dressed and bathe and support around those things. Occupational therapists, as Kathleen said, are also really great at doing some memory work and trying to help keep memory going as long as they possibly can. So that was one of the things that I think Jimmo was going to affect the most is the home care patients with those degenerative diseases such as MS, Parkinson's, um, Alzheimer's, and some of the other dementias. So this may be an area that, that we, where the kind of care that you're going to be able to get at home is really going to expand. It could very well, right? Both because you're going to qualify for these 60-day plans and because, as Sandy pointed out, the services that you're getting may very well start focusing more on the physical therapy services and the occupational therapy services, especially in these Alzheimer's cases. Correct. And remember, once you're getting those services, that the plan can also include home care services. And if you're getting home care services through Medicare, you pay nothing. There is no copay, if I recall correctly, regarding home, correct. home care services. So this is really important. And, uh, yes, yeah, Catherine, I, absolutely. I just, want to, just want to temper that with a little bit of caution. Uh, caution in that um, we, the guidance will be out in January on this from Medicare. And um, uh, the other thing is that there needs to be, we would need to have the ability to document that a skilled person would need to be involved. So for instance, if it would be possible for um, a caregiver or um, someone who is not the skilled deliverer of care to um, take over and do activities or somehow otherwise carry out a program, then that would also be appropriate for the, for the person and that would be based on the decision of the professional clinician who would be involved. As right, well. and so these, and these are all conversations that we're having with VNAs now because one of the, one of the interesting questions then is, so is it, it, would, are the, it, would it be appropriate to basically have a VNA, right, doing, providing the occupational therapy supervision mm -hmm. and developing the plan of care and regularly going in 
and then having the home care people providing the day-to-day -day stuff, right? Home health aids, the home health aids. Aids. That's exactly. right. That's right. And is that an appropriate package? So these are all things that are going to be. I, I mention them to you because this is the big thing to me that's going to change. I this, think long-term right. care is going to look very different. Long, yes, long-term care is going to look very different because it, because it's it's consistent with a lot of state efforts and federal efforts to not have you go to the nursing home, which is what we're going to talk about next. Okay. Thank you, and we're both we're going to keep talking. Next slide, next slide. Uh, so finally, there is getting care when you're really frail, because ironically, the time when you most want to be home. I mean, you always want to be home, right? But the time when you most want to be home is when you're the most frail, right? Because no matter how much, no matter how serious your dementia, if you're at home, you're still going to know where the bathroom is. You're still going to know where the salt and pepper is. You know, you may not, you may forget to shut off the stove, but as long as there's no off button on the stove, you know, it's a great place to be at home. So the question then is, how can you get those kinds of extra services? Next slide. Um, the major source of those services, unless we, and, and this is where Jimmo could really change this equation. The major source of those services has been the Frail Elder Waiver. So we're going to talk about that for a little bit. The Frail Elder Waiver is a program of MassHealth. And MassHealth uh, is the state name for the Medicaid program. Medicare is, is insurance for, is for the unhealthy. Uh, everybody's entitled to it just by virtue of being sick and old. Medicaid is insurance for the poor. So in order to show that you need Medicaid, and therefore MassHealth, if you are at home, and you're trying to qualify for community mass health, Frank and Mary would have to show that their total income was, I want to say like $600, is that right, or 700 it's very, unbelievably low. You have to show that you're, that you're really, really low income. Unless, unless one of you is otherwise eligible for nursing home care. If you are otherwise eligible for nursing home care, then the state and the federal government really don't want you to go to the nursing home because they're going to pay a tremendous amount of money for you to be in that nursing home. So they really want you to stay home. And so there's a, there, is a set of, there are a set of special rules. Um, first of all, the income of the person who is frail and therefore needs all of this help, right, can be as high as $2,130 per month, right? Now, using the Frank and Mary example, either one of them would qualify for that because the spouse's income is not counted. So Frank and Mary can be living together. I think we have a slide on this a little bit later on. So we're gonna, we're gonna, so remember that. Uh, and the assets of the person who is frail and therefore wants to qualify for this program can only be $2,000, but look at the bottom line. The, the assets of the spouse are not counted. I was, talking, I was talking to somebody about this case at their house today. Next slide. 